All right, this recording today will be about the cell. When we look at the cell, we look at the word cell, study of cells, we look at the word cytology. And ology is a study of. And cyt, as C-I-T, refers to cell. These are the smallest independent living entities we have. These are the basic units of life in the, in the, on planet Earth. Some of them are bacteria. It can be unicellular organisms. We, as people, are multicellular organisms. We have approximately 75 trillion cells in our body. 25 trillion of such are red blood cells. We have about 100 billion cells in our nervous system. So that's a lot, a lot, a lot of cells that we are made up of. When we look at their sizes, we measure them in microns, and one micron is one thousandth of a millimeter, which is one thousandth of a meter, which is about a meter is about three, is about a yard to sort of see how small we get. So we can't see those things. Well, we can see uh, a human egg, an ovum with a naked eye, and that's the largest cell that we have, and that's. Um, about 120 microns. Actually, that's not quite the largest. The largest that we have is in an anterior horn cell, and that's in the nervous system. That's about 135 microns. And the smallest cell we have is in the cerebellum, also in the nervous system, is about 5 microns. As a reference point, the red blood cell is between 5 and 8 microns. When we look at their shape, cells are uh, uh, over around muscle cells are spindle like some are flat some are cuboid some are column shaped so we have multiple shapes of cells and we just keep in mind that a shape reflects a function so a structure reflects a function so if a muscle cell is long spindle like that helps us contract better than if it were a sphere and just round so we keep that in mind Cells very, are very specialized. They, we call that differentiate. So we have stem cells that start as one type and then we differentiate them into, depending on what their task is, into red blood cells, into bone cells, into muscle cells, into nerve cells, and so forth. These are single cellular bacteria so that's the single cellular organism. And these here are cells in our system. This is an ovum um, that we can see here. And when we look at this slide, we see the differentiation process. How on top left we have um, a zygote, a fertilized egg, that gets implanted and those cells are all looking the same at first and then they slowly become their unique selves. We have some cells that get flat, you can see there, there is spiky cells, those are neurons, nerve cells. The longer ones, the red looking things, are going to be muscle cells. And then the white stuff looks like it is bone cells, could also look like fat cells, they look similar to that. And then the latter part there on the, the right side, the bluish thing, turns into cartilage. So that just shows us that cells can differentiate. They get multiple tasks given to them and their shape is according to what they have to do. So let's look at the basic structure of a cell. We're going to cell membranes. We'll look on the inside of the cell. We have little organs that do different tasks. Those are called organelles. And we'll go through that. And then we go into our nucleus where we look at the DNA material, the chromosomes and the genes. And we need to do that because after that we're looking at protein synthesis, uh, the splitting of cells, mitosis, and meiosis is the similar process for the sex cells. And then lastly we will look at some transport fluid and solid transport in and out of the cell. Structurally speaking, the inside of the cell has a fluid in it, and it's an aqueous saline solution with some proteins. 
that means it's watery, aqueous means water, saline means salty, a solution with protein in it. We call that the cytosol. Then we do have a sphere, a large sphere, most often quite in the center of the nucleus, uh, if the cell, and that is the nucleus. A cell membrane surrounds, actually surrounds the nucleus as well as the cell itself. Um, and besides those two main structures that are visible, we have smaller structures, the organelles, little, little organs, and they have very specific functions, depending on what they need to do. Some make energy, some package material, some make protein, etc. The cytoplasm is that fluid aqueous solution, which is the cytosol, plus the organelles without the nucleus. That's the cytoplasm. Cytoskeleton is a little skeleton inside the cell that's collagen fibers mainly, um, and that creates a supportive structure that helps the cell maintain its shape. Then we have other little inclusions such as lipid droplets or glycogen granules. We talked about glycogen being sugar molecules, uh, one after the other, that we can easily use them. We talked about that in chemistry. Um, and we also, of course, have other metabolic substances as the cell works and lives and does its job. So this is a generic cell picture with the sphere, the purple sphere in the middle is the nucleus, the bluish on the outside is the cell membrane and then we got a whole bunch of stuff in there so let's let's go into that a little bit let's first though start about the cell membrane we can call the cell membrane also the plasma membrane the, sometimes they call it the plasma lemma or an elementary membrane it is a phospholipid bilayer which we learned in the latter part of the organic chemistry this phospholipid bilayer is semi-permeable. That means it is letting a few things go through while others cannot penetrate. This is due because of the uh, hydrophobic tails, the nonpolar tails of the phospholipids, the ones that point towards each other in a bilayer, they create an oil film in a water environment. <clears throat> So everything that's oil-based can penetrate it. Everything that's water-based has a hard time to penetrate it. We get some leakage, but generally speaking, that stuff stays in or out of the cell, the hydrophilic stuff. Then the cell membrane has a lot of proteins in it, and these proteins have many functions. Some of these proteins are channel proteins. They can open or close and selectively let different things like glucose go in and out. Stuff that cannot penetrate on its own. That's pretty cool. Then we also have pores and those are channel. They are kind of like uh, the channel protein but they're smaller. And so smaller molecules such as water or such as salt type ions can penetrate through those. Then we have other ones, we have receptor proteins, and those proteins uh, alter shape when another molecule that is fitting in shape attaches to it, and therefore uh, sends a message from that place into that protein, that receptor protein. Uh, it, that receptor protein changes shape, and then relays that message to the inside of the cell. That's very important for communication. Then surrounding the cell is a glycocalyx, and that's a thin film layer of sugar molecules on the outside of the cell membrane. Uh, it's very specific to each cell, and it helps the cells themselves be recognized as your own cells or not your own cells. So cell from non-self can be recognized uh, uh, through the glycocalyx and that becomes very very important as we talk about the immune system for example internally inside the cell we will talk about many organelles that do also have this cell membrane these elementary membranes around them 
so this is great. Cell membrane is awesome material. We can use it to create a boundary in a liquid environment uh, for many, many purposes. And this is how it looks. We saw a slide before, but here we have it again. The phospholipid bilayer comes together. The tails, the nonpolar tails, point towards each other, and the polar heads stay on the outside. You can also see in this picture how multiple um, proteins penetrate the cell membrane. Some go in and out, some go through it, some only stay on the outside, on the surface, or some stay more on the inside. And on the top picture, you also see that little sugar, the glycoproteins have sugars sticking up on them, and that will create the glycocalyx.